even what's going on with your move? With the move? Yeah. I'm always on the move. Are you done? No, no, no. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, shot move's done. Yeah. Uh, everything's in place. Uh, just need to like, you know, make some money and buy a CTS, and then we're really done. <laughs> Do you feel like CTS is really going to help you guys out? Yeah, it's like the last last piece of the puzzle. Uh, we'll, you know, just waiting for the right tax appetite. <laughs> Why? Because the amount of screens you're setting up already? Yeah, I mean, uh, the amount of screens, your setup time, uh, just like film, um, you know, like try lock registration. Um, takes a lot of, you know, like lot of necessary talent not you, you don't need as much like talent how much time do you feel like you're in this well first of all how, do you know how many screens you burn a day i don't know i, I don't handle that on a day-to-day -day, but could be could be 40 50 i want to say i don't know uh, when we're when we're going crazy maybe more um but uh yeah it'll definitely be a time saver uh, it'll just be like doing things right the first time for sure i'm excited one of the chat about post-production is we, I feel like sometimes forget all the other stuff that we should do to make sure we create not only a good customer experience, but also a customer that refers others, like a promoting customer. Right. What happens in your post-production process currently right now? So whether they're shipped or picked up, um, they're either, they're sent an invoice right away just saying like here's your final bill um, almost like a thank you yeah and on that invoice it'll have tracking information on there if there's a tracking number yeah. so it's it's just closing out the job properly mm -hmm. sometimes we finish a job we're so excited and we forget to send the invoice the bill the tracking <laughs> information and it's like huh you know like when you order from Amazon there's an order receipt you get when you're done like you know um, so when the job's done, you know, there's that that's done that day. Um, but really, you know, like, you have to turn that customer into, a, you know, the revolving door. Like, they need to come back into your shop. So it is up to you now that you've captivated someone for the first or second or third time to keep them coming back. Right. What about mistakes that come up? Like, how do you handle that? I mean, you were just literally talking about five minutes ago. <laughs> about something about quarter zips, and then I heard some swear words. <laughs> Um, I mean, mistakes happen, right? Like, they happen because of the people or the process. And, you know, uh, you make a mistake for your customer, you lose the trust that your customer gave to you. And you have to win back that trust. So, you know, I don't care as much about a mistake happening that I can fix before a customer picks up their merch. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, if we mess up two shirts and I see it, we order two more, print them, and they go in the scrap pile, whatever, but what ears me is a mistake that is now sent to the customer, and now we have a bad and defective product that is out there in the world that has now like turned somebody off away from us. And that's where that, that promoter is now a detractor, right? They're mm -hmm. running against you. And that can happen so easily. Really? Um, I think like protecting the customer and defending the customer, sometimes we, you, we defend ourselves first, but like, your customer, if you don't defend your customer, they can turn on you, and that is the last thing you want, is that negative reputation. You know, there's a really good, I was reading this article about Jeff Bezos and his shareholder letters, I sent you that one. Yeah. So there's this article, you guys can Google it out there, it's, um, I think it's uh, 21, 21 takeaways from Jeff Bezos's annual shareholder letters. It's on cbinsights.com, I'm sure if you Google it, it'll come up. but. One of the things that I really liked that he talked about was be very fearful of your customers. Mm -hmm. And this kind of goes into MPS, like you're talking about, of a promoter versus detractor type. But right. um, he just talks about how he's, he's just extremely close to his customers and he's constantly listening to improve and like iterate and do as much yeah. as possible. I mean, have you ever used Amazon customer service? Yeah, to cancel. Dude, they're actually really not like we get yeah. our groceries like I get my groceries delivered and uh, what from the Amazon now prime now okay, and okay. we've had a couple issues like the delivery driver can't find it and you call them right away and it's like you know they they acknowledge you they thank you yeah. they respond and then they're just like you know hey we're just gonna refund this like sorry for the inconvenience yeah and you know I was livid that my groceries weren't there but like 
<laughs> gosh, like on the phone, I was just like, huh, they handled that really well, and yeah. I bought groceries the next week. Yeah. Um, so it's it's like that that post that customer service like afterwards, is, and whether it goes right or wrong, like that can. You know, like if you're, yeah, they do it at scale too. For yeah, such a big company, and, and, and you can easy. call and actually talk to someone. And I didn't. I was like, wait, I could call and talk to someone yeah. at Amazon. And you don't have to wait that long. No, where like yeah. their chat box is open. Yeah, or there's not some like you have to type 18 numbers. Oh to, my gosh, like Comcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm instantly talking to someone, and I think Amazon took that from Tony Shea from Zappos when they bought Zappos because his was all customer service based. Mm-hmm. And I think in, in doing a little bit of research. That's something that Amazon adopted was how good they were with, you know, just like, you know, post surveys, pre surveys, engaging with your customer. Like Amazon is top of mind for all of us all the time. Right. Um, but it's even like, all right, let's not be Amazon for a second. Like, if you ever went in and I got a really good haircut, it just went yeah. really, just went really yeah. well. And like after, like, person was super cool. Wait time wasn't that long, and you left, and you're like. I look good, I feel good, and like, I'm going back there. Right. Versus like, I don't know what I just went through or sat through. Right. I think, you know, with a custom experience, like you're getting a haircut, it's kind of like your shirt experience. <laughs> the sounds, haircuts are interesting. Well, because, because it's custom. Yeah. I mean, it's for you. True. So I always, I relate a, a haircut to a custom t-shirt. Yeah. Because you could go to any great clips or whatever. Except, you know, it's different. It's the haircut. <laughs> I feel like you don't want to say if you don't like it because it's already done. <laughs> well, and no, then, it's the same as shirts. But a barber will ask, oh, how do you like it? And even if you don't like it, you, I, I don't know, sometimes I find myself, oh, yeah, it's cool. It looks good. But this, no, the same pattern. I, I see cut, like, I have been there where I've seen a customer open the box and be like, oh, yeah, it's nice. And I'm like, shoot. You know, like, did yeah. we do something wrong? What's this? Was it too big? Was that? Uh, I think it's the same exact as a haircut. Yeah. And you can go to a haircuttery, a great clips, or a high end barber. There's a custom, you know, there's a hair, you know, it's just somewhere to cut your hair for everyone. But it's a custom experience, and the way they make you feel when you walk in the door to when you leave is super important. Yeah. Um, That's actually a really great analogy to a print shop, right? Because you can Google. I just said that. that. I'm repeating the exact same thing you said. <laughs> But it's true. I mean, you could yelp and do the same thing and find like 15 of each. Light bulb, Bruce Ackerman, <laughs> repeat what Steven says. That's it. Say something else so I can repeat it. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. You're 100% right. It's Hold a, on, say that again. I'm what? You're right. Okay, good. It's a great analogy. I mean, they're so similar. Yeah, there's I, three to four barbers in a place. Like, right. You know, for a local business. But... I guess, yeah, it's cool, because you guys actually have a, more of a leg up, because I'm sure they don't have, even use a system for payments or anything else. Maybe. I mean, even, like, I started going to a new place, like this barber shop, and you can make my appointments online. Right. Game changer. So I literally can go in, find the guy that I like getting my hair. Do you pay hair. online, too, before you go No, there? I don't pay online before, but I reserve him for 45 minutes for, like, a cut, mm. um, and it'll be, like, first-time customer, and they're using, like, a subscription service for their appointments. But I can walk in within three minutes. I'm in the chair. He's got a square reader right there. After I get my receipt, and it's like boom. Yeah. Um, and then like it goes on my Google Calendar too. So oh, like I've set up my haircut. Synced up. I've set up my haircut for like you know like a couple weeks from now. Right. You know. So uh, it's simple because like an old school barber shop just doing a couple things with technology and good customer service uh, is is now what's winning me back. Right. And I'm sure there's tons of good barbers out there. Right? Are you hearing similar things with printers? <laughs> <laughs> it's very similar. Uh, what do you do in the production process or post production process to also kind of emulate those things? So you talked about MPS. Are you are you Yeah, so customers? we use Wootrix. So I did one, I took all of my group orders, so I I wanted to quickly survey all my customers from 2018. But that's also W O O T R I C S dot com. Okay. Not Wootrick. Yeah. And they have a free plan too. Free, it's yeah, yeah, it's free. Uh, basically, what it does is it gives you a Mailchimp template or email template, um, and you can send it to one person. You can send it to a thousand people. So someone on someone completion. It sends an email, or does it zap into Mailchimp or something? And so, it. so in 2018, I just sent one to all my customers because we weren't using it yet. And I said, 
you know, I sent it to like a couple thousand customers, not like uh, online store customers, but group orders. Like, how likely are you to refer Campus Inc. to someone else, right. to a friend or colleague? And the feedback I got was incredible. I spent like hours. With really? Because um, they asked for zero to ten, and they asked for the feedback box. Right. So they. It, what's nice about Utrix is it goes. It has a different scale. So if they put like one to six, I believe they are a retractor. Right. And it'll ask you why. What? And you could custom question like retractor what? Detractor or detractor? Detract, detractor. I think detractor. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Retractor. Yeah. But it'll, you're right, Bruce. And then uh, like six to eight is neutral? Six to eight is neutral, and then like nine or ten would be a promoter. promoter yeah. And if they give you a nine or ten, it asks them to then leave a Google review, Facebook review, or Yelp review. If it's a one through six. Oh, Wootrick automatically does it? Yeah, you just put a wow. link in there. If there's a link That's in there. That's great. Yeah. And then it'll send you the feedback if they're. And then if, yeah, so it'll send you the feedback, and then it'll give you your NPS score and then your mean. Um, so, I mean, I said what was your mean? Uh, our mean was 8.9. It's pretty good. Yeah. So, unfortunately, the tractors will cost you more than a promoter. Right. Um, yeah, there's a weighted formula. It's not, it's actually yeah. not a mean. It's like this yeah, it's, NPS formula. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I looked at mean, and that was our average, and it was like an 8.9, so I was pretty happy Do with that. Do you remember that. what the Ruchik, like rating was? Uh, I think we were maybe have been 70, maybe 70. Got it. Uh, which is, I've heard is pretty strong. Like yeah. anything above a 60. I think like Southwest MPS score is 60s. Yeah. Like Apple's like 80s or yeah. something. Yeah. So, you know, I did a bunch of research and, and what's cool is it was a learning experience. So out of the 2,000 people that we sent it to, like 300 filled it out, mm -hmm. which was a pretty good cross section. Yeah. And on the detractors, I mean, you know, there were some detractors that was like six. But then there was some, you know, if there was like a one, we went through each one individually. So like me and my team sat down and just went, why did this happen? Why did this happen? Why did this happen? Uh, and it all came down to communication. Really? Every single like, time. What are some examples? I mean, just like didn't get my proof on time or said the shirts were going to be done and never told me where to pick them up. Or just a very simple thing that it's just like, we just rubbed them the wrong way yeah. a little bit. Now... The fact of the matter was like our detractors were less than like 2%, so I was pretty pleased with it. Yeah. But we went in isolated, and what I was actually able to find was like, of all the detractors, a couple of them were very legitimate, like maybe we goofed and we messed up a couple things, but some of them were like just something really small. Like it took a while to get my invoice, you know, or something like that. So when we read through all of them, we just realized that like customers kind of want to be cuddled and they want they want to be nurtured and like they expect always up to date they right. always they want to be in the know yeah yeah and it's kind of like a barber shop like you know when they turn you around and you're not looking at the mirror right well they don't want you to look at the mirror because they don't want you to just keep watching them right um but occasionally they'll turn it around back like and you'll like catch a glimpse uh you know it's kind of the same thing with our customers where it's like you need to keep them in the know they know that you're working on stuff but you know whether or not the job's done, it's finished, whatever, like, let them know what's going on. Sure. Um, and if a job's not going to finish on time, you know, it's, let them know, like, a couple days before it's due, like, I think it might be a day later, um, just letting you know that. Um, or even after the job's done, like, sending a follow-up behind it, like, you know, how many times do you get a message that's like, how was your experience? Right, right. Or if it's personal from your salesperson. By any e-commerce store, it's super common. Yeah, so like, how would you rate your last experience? Or if you're not ready to use a tool like that, have your CSRs or whatever send a message just following up saying, thank you for ordering with us. Right. Hope your event went well. Right. Something we started doing post-production is incentivizing our employees with reviews. So if they get a good review, um, they get a bonus. So, really? Yeah. If they get a good review for their name on a legitimate customer. Uh -huh. Like on Yelp or something. Yeah. If they help me get a good review. So every two weeks I'll ask like how many emails did we, personal emails did we send out for reviews? Right. Like the jobs that you know you can get a review on and the customers that like, you know what I'm talking about. It's huge. It's huge. And I mean, how many times do you look at a, at a Yelp review for a restaurant and if it's three stars and they make it yellow even too, so yeah, it makes it I, even worse. It's like not like you filter, you know, on Amazon, I filter below four, like if right. it's not, you know, so just training your team post-production to send five emails a day, just asking how the job went, right. being personal with them, um, that will go the distance and it'll keep them top of, keep your shop top of mind. Right. 
So whether or not you had an amazing experience and okay, just a follow up thank you letter. Um, the next time they go to order, it's like, okay, who did I order? Oh yeah, she sent me a thank you note, right? That's the last thing they'll remember until they order the next time. So it better be positive. Um, and that's, that's something you know, we're really starting to do. Um, but then like putting them into your email campaigns and making them part of your family. Um, you know, getting them what do you what do you use for that? Just Mailchimp okay. is. Um, can you just set out? Can you automate though, or like you you set like a monthly? Email? So we send out. They they just go into our. You know, we really want to start using Intercom. It's a little bit more powerful. Um, but for now, we're using Mailchimp. Yeah. Every week, I have um, someone from our marketing scrape our emails and segment them into the right channels because we we service a lot of different channels. Mm -hmm. And then once they're in that channel, um, they'll get their Wootrix thing, so that's the NPS, and then they'll be in their, in our newsletters and, and kind of all of our, uh, all of our stuff. Got it. So, yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, it's awesome that you use NPS. I, I don't see very many shops. It's very common. Um, yeah, I mean, there's some that are expensive, are like Signpost is expensive, but Wootrix is they have free. Free. They started. For like the basics. And I think we may have even upgraded since then too, but. Anyway, yeah. That's Do you great. guys use it pretty heavily? We use it, so we actually, because it's a website, obviously, we can automate and do it more. But we set it up to ask quarterly of everybody. Any person that has a user account that logs in, they'll see huh. it. And so it'll ask them twice? Rolling, no, no, it's just like um, every every three months. But it'll ask them no matter what. So it'll, yeah. it'll ask me once there and then once again? It's going to ask you every three months regardless. Or huh. it's every three or every... Four, one of the two. But what if they said it was a ten last time? Stop asking me. We still ask because I think it's a it's a good overall company rating. So like you're seeing two, yeah, a seventy. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So as a company, at the end of the year, it'd be nice to look at that and say, okay, we moved up five points, and just like you guys too, any negative reviews that have an actual, um, they wrote some feedback goes into Zendesk, which is we use for support. support. And then we, our customer care team actually reaches out to find out more info. Because sometimes for us, it's they just didn't know how to use something and maybe we can explain it better. Um, other times it's, you know, actually they want more functionality or something like that. And I'll take that in as feedback and, you know, it's a good feedback loop, just like you found out. Interesting, too. interesting, yeah. yeah. Do you find customers like giving you honest good feedback? Do you see like, cause I mean, you're, you're more on the tech tech side of things. Do you feel like the same ones will just complain or? <laughs> uh, not really actually. I, I feel like more so, um, part of it is we have to also educate how software is built. I think that may, may help because what may appear as a small change could also be like a huge back end change. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of, um, steps to make sure it's done right and then the other one is just honest most of it is just honest feedback of like hey it'd be so helpful if you can do this or that I've actually had some people thought like a zero means good and oh like, boy yeah so that's how likely are you to rate print out zero <laughs> yeah it's like oh thank you uh, um, but no no it's it's all good feedback and it's literally the Bezos thing and that's what I you know I'm just like fearful of 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 customers and just being very very close with customers and we're taking a new hire over actually to barrel maker on Tuesday just to just get the feel for we send everybody that Ryan has screen printing class which is great I mean they come back knowing so much about printing I'm like I don't know this much about you know Bruce, the process and this and it's just like yeah it's like wow I mean it helps from you guys I remember when we were just starting out like with the sales team like just getting the terminology and learning about equipment. Um, yeah, oh yeah. They have to know, you, you can't, you know, it's like you talking to yeah. a customer. I mean, you have to speak the customer's language. Right, 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 right. Do you, you know, do you find that your customers enjoy that feedback? Like, do you start to see, now that you've got a team that you've taken to all the trade shows that have learned how to screen print, like, does it make the customer, the office more fun? I think so. I think it's it's also really good for us bonding wise too. Like we we took everybody out to the Long Beach show, and they all liked hanging out there. And then plus, 
it opened their eyes completely to the industry. Like I remember my first time going to ISS Long Beach and just, I mean, we were running a tiny shop and then we started getting the software, but everything was done over the internet and phone and we were dealing with students and things as we were growing. But you never saw any other printers except for maybe the one or two in your, your town. But going to that show was just like, that opened their eyes to be like, holy cow, you know, there's, this is going on here, they're making this, this press looks like this, this is the, you know. I mean, the show is just such a eye opener. I don't know why we didn't go sooner, just as a printing company way back as well. Yeah, no, it's, uh, we've made all of our friends from there. Like, yeah, or real friends. life. We turn you turn e friends into the real. You life. turn e friends into uh, what's up, Josh? Uh, <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> Shout out. Um, what What is okay? One last tip then for someone that's just wanting to create a better. I using the word post production gets a little bit confusing. If, if like printing post, but like post post job. And yes. Okay. Post job experience. I think one is uh, don't stop communicating with the customer. Okay. So make sure to send them their invoice right away yeah. with their tracking information. That's like the most important part. Yeah. Or like, here's your invoice, your job is complete. Um, I think number two is a thank you. Um, make sure you send a genuine thank you from whoever took that order um, because that'll be the last thing they remember when they go to reorder. Yeah. And then I think the third thing is uh, your goal is to bring them back into the shop, so they need to go into some kind of marketing tool, MailChimp or whatever, so that you can actually start engaging with them. Um, you know, the next level things are going to be the, 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 the net promoter score and stuff like that, but as a starter, those three things are, are going to take you, you know, to hopefully another level. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, yeah, I really appreciate the time signing off. We'll have to figure out some other topics for next week. But thank you, Print Hustlers, for joining us. It's been super exciting. Stephen Farrag from Campus Inc. I'm Bruce from Printavo. See you next time. Later. Later.